Religion, Democratic Nation's Achilles' Heel. This will be my last commentary on religion for a while. For most episodes, I supply links to supporting information just in case you have reasons to question the information I present. Look in the description below for additional information, and please subscribe and share to prove that we really do have a lot more in common than we think. Adherence to some religious beliefs has indeed helped people and societies overcome difficulties. However, attempts are being made to muzzle religious influence on government policies and practices for what I feel are some good reasons. Nevertheless, should the total suppression of religious beliefs in governments be an ultimate goal? Welcome to Four Seas One Family. It would be utterly irresponsible for those leading democratic nations to not use pragmatic solutions that protect the rights of people to practice their personal beliefs that don't infringe on the rights of others. Nevertheless, powerful groups have used religion to block and embed elements that are retarding a nation's competitiveness, and some individuals, often with government assistance, use religion to keep a population under control. Religion and personal beliefs must not infringe on the rights of others or their nation's development, moral responsibilities, and security. Science or scientism cannot solely explain what is or has been occurring in the natural physical world, and the definitions for science and religion aren't always mutual or confrontational. Indeed, the initial positive contributions science and religion have made have also placed additional burdens on the world that endangers the safety of every living being on this planet. Now, I mentioned in a previous episode that religion in nations like the United States, for example, has an awkward and embarrassing history to tell. And there is clear and recorded evidence of how enslavers used religion to keep black and other impoverished people enslaved and under control. Colonial enslavers in the New World used selective religious doctrines and interpreted them to support their belief that slavery, or their preferred term, peculiar institution, was a moral concept and perpetual state to keep those who obviously, in their minds, were less valued people. Due to the audacity of enslaved and free black people, progressive white Christians, and abolitionists, African descendants in America were smuggled to freedom and later educated. Associations to unite and coordinate effective political movements were created that assisted in dismantling policies and practices like Jim Crow and other forms of institutionalized racism, which prevented black and other marginalized people from being treated equally. Organizations fighting for the equal treatment of minorities and other sidelined people forced the definition of democracy in nations like America to be recalibrated and widened the range of who is considered a citizen and therefore protected under the law. However, and unfortunately not perfect, this struggle is still going on today. African descendants were forcefully exported to North and South America, Europe, and other parts of the world with nothing in their possessions, although they brought nothing with them besides their skin. They managed to keep their distinct local African beliefs deep within them. Beliefs survived and were passed on by descendants through storytelling and idol worship, which so-called Christian enslavers looked down upon and considered heathenistic superstitions and paganistic beliefs. Were slaves from Africa, for example, the only ones who worshipped idols? Hmm. However, they reluctantly allowed enslaved people to maintain these beliefs within their closed and heavily supervised communities. Over time, for example, in America, many enslaved descendants became Christians of the Catholic and Protestant churches. However, there were levels of acceptance for African descendants. 
the Catholic Church quickly allowed African descendants to form satellite congregations. However, Protestant churches placed barriers upon these descendants before baptism. Similar barriers existed in other churches that had apprehensions or public pressure to restrict or even bar the acceptance of African descendants. Bibles given to Black congregations called slave Bibles had passages of the Old Testament omitted, which contained parts advocating against the enslavement of people and how the Israelites fought for their freedom from oppression. Sections of these slave Bibles were redacted to prevent Black Christians from thinking about fighting for their freedom or causing a rebellion. Stories of the Israelites fighting for their freedom and other biblical texts eventually gave many enslaved and freed Black Christians the mental feel to become more outspoken about their mistreatment, leading to changed laws that positively enhanced their condition. As the number of African descendants in these churches became educated and increased, so did the influence of religious doctrine that encouraged them to demand freedom in a nation that was built undoubtedly upon their labor. It can't be denied that positive steps have been taken in America to improve the treatment of formerly enslaved black people. And democracy made it possible to see through the hypocrisy of how religion was used to control people and maintain a peculiar institution. However, today, there are still people in the world who aren't allowed to have any type of access of this type of imperfect opportunity. American and European colonial powers aren't the only ones with a history of using religion to control a population. Even today, religious doctrines have influenced a number of politicians and democratic nations to infuse religious dogma into their platforms that influences their decisions regarding the legality of laws and regulations. Authoritarian nations have been and are currently aggressively controlling the influence of religious beliefs to maintain and expand their total control. One of the largest authoritarian nations that comes to mind is China and how its government has been implementing rules to control religious beliefs, especially of minorities. Now, it isn't difficult for governments or zealous individuals to devise reasons to suppress religious freedoms. In the case of an authoritarian government, the excuse to crush the influence of religion is to mitigate the possibility of religious and political uprisings such as those that have taken place in Western nations, which could weaken or complicate government controls. It would be fair to say that the government in China has only allowed the Christian religion to continue after taking control of and editing the contents in Christian Bibles that they feel goes against any view held by the government so that they can maintain and propagate to their authority as well as guard against foreign influence. No opinion that questions the legitimacy of government rules and regulations are permitted or even slightly tolerated, much like an advanced edition of the slave Bibles in America. Certain sections of religious texts are omitted. The Chinese Communist Party announced that their reason for controlling the edit of their interpretation of the Bible was for making accurate and authoritative interpretations of classical documents to keep pace with the times. In addition, their reinterpretation of this classical document was said to ensure core socialist values. In one version of their core socialist valued version of the Bible, Jesus is depicted as a sinner. China's reinterpretation of a Bible passage in the New Testament, John 8, which some call a forgiveness story, talks about when a woman who had committed the crime of adultery was brought to Jesus. According to the law of the time, the punishment for such crime was stoning. Jesus was asked of his opinion of her crime. Now, as a side note, the Bible notes that this occurrence was a trap to accuse Jesus of an apparent crime. Jesus used his fingers to start writing on the ground and uttered the words, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. The people who heard him speak these words eventually walked away, and Jesus concluded by saying, then neither do I condemn you. 
Go now and leave your life of sin. However, the Chinese version ended with a very different outtake. As the crowd dissipated, their version stated that Jesus stoned the woman himself and said, I am also a sinner. A question that needs to be asked is why so much effort was put into changing the original version. One religious scholar said that the CCP's version is to show that Jesus was a sinner, so therefore wasn't a god. So why put faith in someone much less like you? To most casual observers, it may appear that the government of China is tailoring religious doctrine to exclusively maintain its political and social controls. But step back for a moment to think, regardless of it being right or wrong, about other reasons why China is suppressing religion. Is it only to prevent their population from questioning authority? The truth is, America and China aren't the only nations where interpretations of religious doctrines have been changed to control a narrative or eliminate opposition. I hope that I have brought attention to how religion can be misused in modern times. Regardless of my personal beliefs, I believe that religion for some people can play a positive and priceless role by giving them the energy to overcome their difficulties. I do not want to see the blocking, restricting, or abolishing of religion anywhere. However, people in democratic nations must remain conscious of how some powerful or charismatic individuals, politicians, and institutions can or have used religion to enforce narratives into government policies and practices that impede on or suppress targeted groups that threaten or present opposition to it. If you have found what we have to offer of any value, Please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you listen to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before it's season one family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.